ECT is electroconvulsive therapy, and as the name suggests, it is a treatment. Treatment that is used to pass electricity, which is tiny electrical currents through the brain, to the, through the scalp, to the brain, to induce seizures, which is therapeutic. Now, this is done through uh, uh, under general anesthesia. Now, today, uh, we, 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 we'll, we'll go through and discuss and see how ECT is being done and how it is being carried out. You're comfortable? You're comfortable? You're comfortable? Now this is the ECT machine. This is the machine that you're going to use to, 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 to bring electrical currents to the patient. And as you can see, these are the recordings we have already set for this uh, specific patient. Now ECT was introduced by two people. They are Italians. There's one, an Italian psychiatrist, who is known as Lucio Bini, and another one is an Italian neurologist known as Ugo Caletti. Now these two are the people who introduced uh, ECT that we now use. And the modern ECT is far much better than the ECT that we used to see before. What, what do you mean by that? The, uh, the ECT that was done before, it was done without any anesthesia, meaning a patient would even almost break their limbs or even ha uh, have seizures that will make them bite their tongue. But now the good thing about modern ECT, we are using general anesthesia, which will calm the patient, the muscle will relax at the same time. So the patient will feel much better and the patient is uh, generally sleepy, most of, generally unconscious most of the time. One, in severe depression, that is can be either unipolar or bipolar. Two, in treatment resistant depression, this refers to depression that has shown no improvement after different trials of medications and psychotherapy. Three, in severe mania. Four, catatonia. This is a neurological condition in which the patient ex experiences extreme immobility or motor excitement, both of which can be life-threatening. Last but not the least, schizophrenia and other psychotic illnesses. My name is Esther Mwegengare. I'm a clinical officer anesthetist. Uh, my role in uh, ECT treatment in psychiatric patients uh, is uh, basically to ensure safety of the patients during the procedure. One, before the patient is uh, scheduled for the procedure, we basically do lab investigations. Uh, we check whether uh, they are within normal range and uh, we ensure the patient has a consent for the procedure and uh, psychiatric patients normally cannot sometimes sign for themselves. We seek con consent from the relatives or the next of kin or their guardians and once they consent then we go ahead with the procedure. We also uh, inquire whether they have any other comorbidities, uh, illnesses that can interfere with the uh, anesthesia administration and if they have any we ensure that they are stabilized and they are taking their drugs correctly and uh, the conditions have been uh, controlled in a way that they are uh, near normal, uh, normal functioning of the body. And uh, once the, all that is uh, uh, within normal, we go ahead with the procedure. For patients to undergo a CT procedure, there are various um, preparations that need to be done before the procedure. One, you need to uh, ensure that there is an informed consent signed by the relative for the patient to undergo the ECT procedure. Also, you need um, to ensure that uh, some tests are to be done, um, like uh, USCs, uh, you have LFTs, as well as the full hemogram for the patient uh, to undergo the ECT. You also need, uh, you also need to ensure that uh, you have, uh, you staff the patient from midnight. Mm, that's at least uh, eight hours prior to the ECT procedure. And you also need to ensure that uh, you take the vital signs, that is the blood pressure, temperature, weight, as well as the, the 
pamphlet for the patient and preparation for the ECT procedure. You also need to ensure that um, the lines have been fixed and also ensure that the, the medication uh, are well prepared uh, for the ECT uh, procedure. At the ECT room, we ensure that uh, our patient monitors are working. We ensure that we have oxygen and uh, all the drugs that we use uh, for anesthesia are available. We ensure that the emergency drugs are there. And uh, during the procedure, the role of anesthetist is to, do, uh, to administer the anesthesia, then monitor the patients during the procedure and until reversal from anesthesia. And uh, the anesthetist uh, ensures that uh, the patient is uh, fully awake before they are transferred to the recovery room where the patient is handed over to the nurse uh, in charge of the recovery room. Now, as you can see, the patient is now sedated. The anesthetist has given me the go ahead to start. Now, these are the bilateral electrodes that I'll put, and I'll put on the skull, and I'll press it. And after three seconds, we'll be able to see what is going to happen. So you can observe, and you will see twitching of the foot. Now, that is the twitching of the foot, and that will, and that means that the electrical impulses have gone through the patient, and you have achieved a seizure. Now, as you've seen seizures now, we've seen the twitching of the foot. Now, I will let the anesthetist reverse the patient. The patient will be reversed, will be taken back to the recovery room. And recovery room, the patient will just be there for a few minutes. As you can see, this is a very short procedure. Now, after the recovery room, the vital signs will be checked. And if they are all stable and the patient will be stable, the patient now will walk back to the ward, just like the patient walked to the procedure room. So it is better as compared to the previous ECT. Now, ECT is usually done to be, I, we, so There are several indications for ECT. One is a patient that you've treated and treated and treated severely for depression, but you're generally not seeing any improvement. So we usually call it treatment-resistant uh, depression. So treatment-resistant depression would work best if you're given ECT, then later on introduce the antidepressant. So these are the patients we see improving so much better with ECT. The other thing is you have a pregnant lady who is depressed, but you want, you, you want to give them medication, but you're worried about the fetus. So ECT is the first line treatment for such patients. So we do ECT on a pregnant woman who is depressed. We also do ECT on a patient who is psychotic and has just delivered or is almost delivering or is doing the, uh, almost delivering or just delivered. So ECT also works best for them. Now ECT we work under is a multidisciplinary we work under a multidisciplinary team. And what do I mean by a multidisciplinary team? We have the anesthetist who is available. We have the consultant psychiatrist who does the ECT herself or himself. We also have clinicians and we also have psychiatric nurses who do the vital signs and all the way facilitate the patient before recovery and after recovery. So we work as a team generally. After the ECT procedure has been done, the patient is taken to the uh, recovery room whereby we come and observe the vital signs. Normally it takes uh, around 10 to 15 minutes for the patient to be fully awake. Once the patient is fully awake, uh, we normally take the patient uh, to the ward as we continue with other management. The side effects or the risk factors of electroconvulsive therapy are not serious and are very rare. They usually occur after the procedure, whereby the patient can experience a mild headache, nausea, temporary memory loss, and sometimes confusions. 
Now, the benefits of ECT are so many. And we can say that 60 to 90% of patients, we have seen they have improved the quality of life. So we have seen a great change with ECT. And also patients who are suicidal, especially the patients who are depressed and they feel like they've lost hope and they want to commit suicide. These are the best patients to start with ECT as the first line mode of treatment. We also have patients who have come in, they don't want to eat, they don't want to take any medications, they're feeling extremely low or they're catatonic. They generally don't move, don't want to move, or they're just there generally. So if you do ECT on these patients as the first line of treatment, we have seen a great improvement in these patients. We can say that ECT is a very good treatment and can be used even as a first line of treatment as compared to certain medications and then changing to ECT.